Hello, my name is Ken Burke, and I'm your elected clerk of the Circuit Court and Comptroller for Pinellas County. We have created a series of videos to assist you with completing the forms or packets that you will submit to either initiate your case or address issues that have arisen in a pending case. To ensure that your documents are processed quickly and efficiently, it is important that the documents are completed fully and properly. This short video will take you through the forms or packets, as well as answer some of the most frequently asked questions. At any time, please feel free to pause the video and take a moment to fill out the applicable section. Once you have completed the form or packet, please refer to our website or contact our office for instructions on how and where to submit these documents. Should you have any additional questions regarding a family law, small claims, or landlord-tenant case, affordable legal services are offered through the Clerk's Self-Help Center. Please visit our website at www.mypinellasclerk.org for additional information. Thank you. Florida law separates injunctions for protection into five categories, domestic, stalking, repeat, sexual, and dating. When determining the type of injunction for which you need to file, it is very important that you read over all of the requirements for each type before selecting one. Choosing the incorrect type may cause your petition to be denied by the judge. Injunction for protection forms need to be filed in person or via the Florida Court's e-filing portal, myflcourtaccess.com. Domestic violence is defined as violence or stalking that has occurred, or that the petitioner has reasonable cause to believe they are in imminent danger of becoming the victim of, between individuals who are spouses, former spouses, or persons related by blood or marriage, who are residing or have resided together as a family, or individuals who are residing together or have resided together as a family, or individuals who have a child in common. Repeat violence is two acts of violence or stalking on two separate occasions, one of which must have been within the past six months, committed by a person against another person. These types of injunctions are usually appropriate for neighbor against neighbor, coworker against coworker, or other types of relationships that are of a non-domestic or non-dating nature. Sexual violence requires one of the following criteria must be met. Number one, you must have reported the incident to law enforcement and be cooperating in any criminal proceedings. Or, number two, the respondent must have been sentenced to prison and the term expired or is due to expire within 90 days. And any one incident of the following. Number one, sexual battery. Number two, a lewd or lascivious act committed upon or in the presence of a person younger than 16. Number three, luring or enticing a child. Number four, sexual performance by a child. Or, number five, any other forcible felony wherein a sexual act is committed or attempted. Stalking violence is defined by someone who is purposely following or harassing you repeatedly over a period of time for no legitimate purpose, causing you emotional stress. If in doing so, he or she threatens your life or threatens to harm you with the intent to cause you reasonable fear for your safety, then the act becomes aggravated. Dating violence is violence or stalking that has occurred or that the petitioner has reasonable cause to believe they are in imminent danger of becoming a victim of between individuals who, number one, have been in a dating relationship within the past six months, number two, have had an expectation of affection or sexual involvement, and number three, have been involved over time and on a continuous basis, excluding individuals who have only engaged in ordinary fraternization in a business or social context. Violence does not include all offensive behavior trespassing, criminal mischief, threats, tampering with a witness, and harassing phone calls are all criminal offenses which should be reported to law enforcement but may not necessarily alone qualify for the issuance of an injunction. The Pinellas County Clerk is pleased to offer Turbo Court, which makes the task of filling out forms easier to understand and offers a convenient method to prepare forms, petitions, and other court documents for the following case types. Domestic Violence Injunctions Disillusions of marriage with children, disillusions of marriage without children, and delinquent tenants slash evictions. Please visit turbocourt.com for further instruction. First, let's go over the information that is required on pleadings filed. The header will need to be completed for each document filed. Pinellas County is in the 6th Judicial Circuit. 
The case style states who is the petitioner and who is the respondent in a lawsuit. The person who originally asks for legal action is called the petitioner and remains the petitioner throughout the case. The person against whom the original legal action is being requested is called the respondent because he or she is expected to respond to the petition. Your case number is a unique number used to identify your legal action. They are assigned in sequential order in the court it is filed in and will be provided to you when you file your case. A case number may also be referred to as a reference number or UCN number. Always remember to sign and date any form where a signature is required. Some forms, such as affidavits, are notarized documents. Wait to sign these forms until you are in the presence of a notary or deputy clerk. Please bring photo ID with you. Read all forms and complete the required fields. Please make sure to provide accurate information and print clearly. This is an information sheet to assist the clerk in preparing your petition for injunction. You are the petitioner. The individual against whom you are filing is the respondent. Please fill in all the information below completely and to the best of your knowledge. If the respondent does not know your address, you may request a confidential filing of your address. Write confidential on the lines below where your contact information is requested. You will need to answer all of the questions within. If you are a victim of violence and have reasonable cause to believe you are in imminent danger of becoming the victim of another act, or if you have reasonable cause to believe that you are in imminent danger of becoming a victim of violence, you can use this form to ask the court for a protective order. A petition is filed by an individual against an individual. A petition may not be filed by or against a group of individuals or an entity, such as a business. Complete the required information regarding the petitioner and respondent. Remember, if you fear that disclosing your address to the respondent would put you in danger, you should write confidential in the space provided on this form for your address and telephone number. Answer each question to the best of your ability. It is very important to provide the court with your specific relationship to the respondent. Answer the questions pertaining to the case history. A space is provided for you to complete a narrative of the actions that have occurred that have led you to file for an injunction. Please provide detailed information, starting with the most recent event and work your way backwards. Do not write on the back of the paper. You may attach additional pages if necessary. The judge will make a decision based on the information you provide. If you and the respondent share a home, you may ask the court to grant you exclusive use of the home you share. If you and the respondent have minor children in common, you may need to ask the court to establish a parenting plan and or child support. If you do not have children in common, you can skip these sections. You may ask the court to prohibit the respondent from going to your place of employment, your school, or your children's school and places frequently visited such as family and friends' homes. Please do not list public places. Each injunction type requires the filing of a petition. Each petition requires much of the same information that was just gone over. Read your petition carefully and complete the questions to the best of your knowledge and ability. Use this form in any case involving parental responsibility for, custody of, or time sharing or visitation with any minor children. This affidavit is required even if the parental responsibility for, custody of, or time sharing or visitation with the minor children is not in dispute. Begin by entering your full name and the number of children subject to this proceeding. Read through the form and fill in the information requested about the minor children. Include every location the child has lived in the last five years. Complete the remaining sections for each child related to your case. If there are any other proceedings regarding the custody, visitation, child support, or care of the minor child or children in this or any other state that you have knowledge or have been a party to, check the appropriate box for your situation and enter the requested information if applicable. The following forms are required for all injunction types. The court has three options when considering your petition. Issue a temporary injunction and set the case for hearing with notice to the respondent or not issue a temporary injunction and set the case for hearing with notice to the respondent, or deny the temporary injunction and not set the case for hearing. If the court issues a temporary injunction or sets the case for hearing with no temporary injunction in place, the other party will receive a copy of documents filed. This form provides you an option that if the court does not grant you the temporary injunction, you can ask that no hearing be set. 
This way, the party would not receive copies of the documents you filed, since you will have no protection in place. Fill in your name and check the appropriate box corresponding with the injunction type you are filing. Read the option provided and initial. Florida Rule of Judicial Administration 2.545 Section D requires the petitioner in a family law case to file with the court a notice of related cases, if any. A case is considered related if it involved the same parties, children, or issues and is still pending when the family law case is filed. A case can also be related if it affects the court's jurisdiction, or an order in the new case will affect an order on the same issues in a different case. Always read through the entire motion before filling in information in the fields provided. Check the box that applies to your case. If there are no related cases, check the appropriate box and proceed to sign and date the notice. If there are cases related to your new action, list the case information in the provided fields. Check the box that corresponds with the related case type. If none of the options apply, use the other box to enter the case type. Check the box as to where your case was filed. Fill in the state where the case is filed if it was not in Florida. Fill in the name of the court and the last order or judgment filed in the case. For example, if your case is in Pinellas County, the name of the court would be the Sixth Circuit Court, Pinellas County, Florida. Next, check the boxes that apply to the relationship between the two cases. Include further detail of the relationship below. If you have more than one related case, list each one separately in the spaces provided. If you would like the related cases to be coordinated between the two courts, check the appropriate box and list the case number in the space provided. Check the box that best fits your situation. If you are unsure which one to check, you may need to consult with an attorney. Remember to sign and date the completed form. This form will aid the court and the clerk in identifying related cases. This form is required to be completed and should be filed with case initiation. Fill in the required fields. Remember the petitioner is the party who is initiating the action. Please check the answer that applies. Answer the questions for each child not born to this marriage as required on the form. This form is used to provide information to the sheriff. You will complete this form with information about the person you have filed against for service of your petition, should you be granted a temporary injunction or receive a return hearing date. If you have any questions about filing your case with the Pinellas County Clerk's Office, please contact us at 727-464-7000 or make an appointment to speak with an attorney at any of our three self-help centers.